Morning, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee here. We're looking at the Beatitudes uh, in our daily devotions. And I uh, just want to start with the first one, reminding you that Jesus went up on the hillside. Matthew tells us in Matthew chapter 5, he sat down and his disciples followed him. And he began to open his mouth and began to teach them, it says here. Verse 3 says, the first of these Beatitudes, as we call them, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And today, uh, I'd like to feature some thoughts from Sinclair Ferguson. Uh, this is called the Sermon on the Mount, Kingdom Life in a Fallen World. Ferguson, a pastor, a theologian, an author, uh, one of the, the sage-like men that I always go to when I want to understand the scriptures more and what God is saying to us. He says here, uh, really speaking about all of the, the, the first three Beatitudes, they describe the Christian as one who is poor in spirit, one who mourns, and one who is meek or gentle. There is a common element in these characteristics. It is the recognition that what we are in the presence of God is what we are, no more, no less. Only such belong to the kingdom of God and receive the encouragement and comfort of his grace. Only such have their mourning turned into dancing and enter into the reality of the promise of the land given to Abraham, which was a picture of Christ and his authority over all lands. Poverty of spirit is neither a financial nor a depressive condition, although it has often been mistaken for both. Some Christians have given away all their possessions on the basis of this beatitude. But a man can possess nothing and still lack this spirit. Neither is poverty of spirit a bad self-image in which low self-esteem, introversion, and morbidity predominate. Again, a man can be marked by all of these characteristics and yet know nothing of what Jesus meant by poor in spirit. In the Old Testament, the poor is almost a technical term for a particular group of people. Psalm 34, 6 speaks about this poor man who called on the Lord and was heard and saved. In Psalm 40, verse 17, the author describes himself as poor and needy and asks the Lord to remember him and deliver him. Similar statements elsewhere underline the fact that to be poor is to be weak and helpless, to be dispossessed and to lack the resources to defend and save oneself. The poor are the needy and the captives who seek God as their only refuge and salvation. They are the bankrupt of this world who know themselves to be so and who therefore trust in the Lord as their only hope of protection and deliverance. But what is poverty of spirit, Ferguson asks. By speaking of the poor in spirit, Jesus underlines the fact that he is not speaking about a lack of material prosperity. That may lead to poverty in spirit, but it is not identical to it. Indeed, physical poverty may harden our pride. Jesus is describing the person who sees his spiritual bondage, is conscious of the debt of his sins, and knows that in himself he is dispossessed before God. All he can do is cry for mercy and depend upon the Lord. No one can be a Christian without this spirit. Everyone who is a Christian has this spirit. It is the spirit of the prodigal son. He left his father proudly self-assured in his share of the inheritance. But when he became bankrupt, he came to his senses in humility of spirit, emptied of all his pride. He came home to his father, empty-handed, no longer full of himself, but looking only for whatever his father might be pleased to give him. So it is with the Christian. And I'll close uh, the, the reading portion of, of uh, Ferguson's thoughts here from, uh, as he quotes A.M. Toplady, Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace. Foul I to the fountain fly, wash me, Savior, or I die. That's poverty of spirit. Um, grateful to a God who's so generous, so gracious, so kind to us, that even when we finally do come to our senses and recognize our poverty of spirit, 
we find that he has already come running out of the house. He was waiting for us. He was looking into the, out the, watching from the windows, hoping we would return to him. And he comes running out of the house to the prodigal son. He puts a robe on his back, a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And he shouts for the household servants to, to kill the fatted calf and to have a, throw a party, celebrate. And there's a celebration waiting for each and every one of us. There's a golden ring for you and a pair of sandals. The Lord is eager to receive us when we turn to him. Uh, grateful for his grace and mercy. I know you are too. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day. And I thank you for the blessedness uh, of coming to the place of seeing just how much we depend on you, how much we belong to you, how much you are eager to lavish us with your grace and your mercy and your kindness. May we walk in the light of that this day and the blessedness of that this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. The second of the Beatitudes tomorrow. I hope you'll join me.